So we're now going to look at a solar trough, which is used in concentrating solar power systems. And we'll examine a couple of ways ASAP allows us to create and analyze this type of geometry. We're going to start in the ASAP native environment using the biconic command, which allows us to create a surface with two different radius of curvatures in each of our primary axes and two different conic constants. In this case, we're creating a mirror surface which is five meters across by two and a half meters high. We have a focal length of 1.71 meters and our conic constant is minus one for a parabolic surface. We can run the file and in our 3D view, we can observe that we have created a parabolic trough. We've also added a receiver tube, which is typically used to collect the reflected solar energy as well as a glass envelope, which is typically evacuated and surrounds the receiver tube. If we look at the 2D view, we'll see that we have created a collimated source of rays. This represents our solar source. We have traced those rays to our parabolic surface, and we're looking at just the reflected rays from the surface down to our receiver tube. We magnify the image, we can see that all of the energy has been properly focused to our receiver and in fact would come to a point focus where the receiver not there. Once we've completed the ray trace, ASAP allows us to quickly analyze where all of the energy has traveled in our system. And in this case, we can see that all of the energy has been collected at the receiver for a perfect parabolic trough. ASAP also allows us to create a map of our parabolic surface, and this is done by tracing a user-defined grid of rays to the surface and calculating the intersection point for every ray. This data is then saved to a file which can be recalled and is shown in an ASAP picture window. We can see in cross-section that we have created a parabolic surface in the YZ plane. A second way that we can create this type of surface is to read in three-dimensional coordinate data. And we'll now look at an example in Excel where we've written a mathematical equation for a perfect parabolic trough surface. And to that surface, we're going to add, in this case, a sinusoidal deformation, which might actually represent data taken from either a fielded system or from the manufacturing line. And when we add those two surfaces together, we get a deformed parabolic surface. Now, in this case, because of the scale of the deformation, it's clearly very difficult to tell that our surface has been deformed. We can then take the three-dimensional coordinate data for those surfaces, and we can save that data in text file format. Here we have the X, Y, and Z coordinates for our perfect parabolic surface. We've also saved a similar text file for the deformed parabolic surface, and we can directly read that data back into ASAP. Now, within ASAP, we can use the fitted command. The fitted command uses a singular value decomposition algorithm to fit through the three-dimensional coordinate data that we simply read into our program. When we run that file, we'll do the same analysis that we just completed for the biconic surface. And we can see in the three-dimensional view that we have, again, traced rays to our parabolic reflector. Those rays have been focused down to our receiver tube. And in this case, we've plotted both the parabolic surface and the data points through which it was fitted. If we go to the two-dimensional view, we can again see that all of the energy has been properly focused down to the receiver, just as was done for the biconic surface. Now, if we repeat the same analysis for the deformed surface by simply reading in the deformation data that we generated in Excel, it's rather difficult to see anything in the 3D view but in the two-dimensional view, we can immediately see that the deformation has resulted in energy not coming to the perfect point focus that we had before. In fact, again, if we magnify the area around the receiver tube, we can actually see that a certain amount of our energy has completely missed the receiver. Now, in this case, if we again analyze where the energy has gone in the system, we can see that only 77% of the energy was actually captured at our receiver. The other 23% of the energy hit the envelope, but was then lost to the system. So in this case, ASAP has allowed us to quickly analyze the collection efficiency of the deformed parabolic trough. Now we've created a map surface 
for both the perfect parabolic trough and the deformed parabolic trough. And ASAP allows us to quickly subtract one from the other. And when we look at the difference between the two surfaces, we can quickly determine that we have recovered the sinusoidal deformation that we induced in Excel. However, any program could be used to generate this type of text data as well as using ASAP itself. Now, one might ask, since we've created a perfect surface as a biconic within ASAP, and we've also fitted data for a perfect surface, what is the difference between those two perfect surfaces? We can use the same map command to take the difference between the biconic and the fitted surface. And in this case, we can see that the scale of the data is approximately 80 nanometers. So we've created a mirror surface using two different methods in ASAP, that mirror being five meters across. And the difference in the two methods has resulted in an absolute magnitude of only 80 nanometers difference. So we can see that ASAP is a very powerful environment for designing new optical systems, as well as analyzing measured data from an as-built or fielded system.